The Unsolved Mystery of Longinus Spear, the Secret Weapon that Pierced Jesus Christ. The spear with which Jesus was pierced is probably one of the most important relics of humanity. Unfortunately, archaeologists are reserved about the authenticity of the Holy Spear, the one that pierced Jesus Christ in the ribs causing his death. The one who stabbed the Savior was called Caius Longinus, a Roman centurion, who then immediately after his deed converted to Christianity. It is said that this spear was made in Damascus by a skilled blacksmith, and the gesture of abominable cruelty by the Roman centurion was a natural one in those days. He wanted to make sure that the crucified one was dead and not dying especially after the whistle's legs were crushed by nails. Legends say that this spear, more precisely its sharp point, was an object of propaganda and trade between warriors of ancient times. The Holy Spear came into the hands of Mauritius the African, the first Christian knight, then it was owned by Constantine the Great, from whom Venetian thieves stole it, so that later it became part of the treasure of the Knights Templar. The origins of the legend of the Spear of Destiny lie in the Bible. In the Gospel according to John, there are several paragraphs that describe the circumstances after the death of the Savior. Because on Saturday evening, for the Jews, the strict celebration of the Sabbath began, their priests asked Pilate to crush the legs of the crucified, so that their bodies would not remain on the cross on such a significant day for the Jews. Once the order was spoken, the soldiers mutilated the limbs of the two robbers crucified together with Jesus, but because the Savior had died, the torture was no longer applied to him. The soldiers came, therefore, and broke the legs of the first one, then those of the other, who had been crucified with him. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead, they did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out of it. Taking over and amplifying the biblical legends, the popular imagination created numerous stories about the spear that pierced Jesus. Written, most of them, during the Crusades, they claimed that the Roman soldier who had prevented the mutilation of Jesus' legs so that the prophecy of the scriptures would be fulfilled, none of his bones will be broken, had done it out of pity, deeply impressed by the courage and dignity of the crucified. Proving that he was dead, by planting the spear, he actually wanted to spare Jesus the humiliation of having his body crushed. In fact, the centurion Gaius Cassius later converted to Christianity, becoming famous as Longinus, the man with the spear. His weapon, christened Spear of Destiny, it will know an adventurous existence over time, passing from hand to hand, from one historical era to another. Over time, the legend made it a kind of enchanted talisman, the one who possessed it, knowing its power, he could control the destiny of the world. But the Spear of Destiny was not the only object invested with tremendous powers by touching the body of Jesus. The first Christian writing state that all the relics of the crucifixion were endowed with miraculous powers. Christ's shirt healed the sick and resurrected the dead. The wood of the cross on which he had been martyred had the power to stop all evil and defeat the enemy, while the crown of thorns caused deep humiliation, canceling the fiercest of human pride. The fact that, among all these relics, the most coveted, especially by the military leaders of the world, was the Spear of Destiny is not surprising, its strength ensured historical supremacy. The path of the spear through the historical centuries remains an extremely passionate subject. The oldest information comes down to the year 285, our era, when Mauritius, the Christian commander of the Theban Legion, wanted to die with a lance in his hand, along with his 6,666 soldiers, by order of the Roman tyrant Maximian. Later, she permanently accompanied the Emperor Constantine the Great during the battles he waged to secure his sovereignty over the Eastern Roman Empire, which he converted to Christianity. The same spear seems to have been useful to the Emperor Theodosius, who used it to defeat the Goths. Lancea left Rome in 410, after the city was sacked by Alaric I, falling into the hands of the Germans. From this moment, it will appear regularly throughout history, among the barbarians and warriors of Northern Europe. The Frankish general Charles Martel, nicknamed the Hammer of God, had it when he wanted to impose the Christian faith throughout Western Europe, after crushing the Arabs at Poitiers, in 733. Then, the relic remained with the Franks, who were convinced that strengthened their military dominance until the reign of Charlemagne, the first emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, at the beginning of the 9th century. 
Possession of the spear ensured the foundation of the Carolingian dynasty. In 47 victorious campaigns, she never left Charlemagne. But he lost it by mistake when returning from his last battle, dying in the following days. Later, the lance reappears in medieval stories, becoming a sign of power for a long succession of holy emperors, mostly Germanic, finally reaching Francis I, Emperor of Austria. The spear remained in Vienna until the approach of World War II, when her fascination extended to a diabolical figure, Adolf Hitler. Hitler and the Spear of Destiny Hitler's path crossed for the first time with that of the Lance in 1912, when the future Fuhrer was only a bitter poor student studying fine arts in the Austrian capital. There happened the lightning seduction for the holy relic. At the Hofburg Museum, where the Lance was exhibited, the young Hitler spent hours contemplating it. According to the accounts of Walter Jonas Stein, an Austrian mathematician and occultist who met Hitler just before the start of World War I, the future Führer was already an expert in the legends related to the Holy Spear and its ability to confer supreme power. Incidentally, one of Hitler's first acts, in his new capacity as Reich Führer, was to steal the treasures of the Habsburg crown to bring them to Germany. Among them was, of course, the Spear of Destiny. The same Stein reports that Hitler never hid the effect produced by the lance on him, little by little, I realized that the lance emanated a fantastic presence, the same terrifying presence that I had also felt in the depths of my ego, in the rare moments of life when I had a premonition of the great destiny that awaited me, said the future leader. Arriving in Germany, the lance was very well guarded, just like the other pieces of the Habsburg treasure in the Church of St. Catherine in Nuremberg. If Hitler was so convinced of the power of the spear, as Stein said, no doubt he believed with the same conviction that its loss would bring about the collapse of his dictatorial rule. Possession of the chain of destiny strengthened his belief that he would fulfill his mission, becoming the sole master of the world. From legend to reality. At this point, the relationship between Hitler and the Lance becomes an example of the bizarre symbiosis that occurs when legends concretely mix with the lives of mortals. Assuming that the spear had no power whatsoever, those who came into possession of it were so convinced that it really existed that they gave it a mystical meaning that had a concrete impact on history. Returning to the legend, it is said that the moment when Hitler parted with the lance coincided with the collapse of the Third Reich. In October 1944, the city of Nuremberg was hit by Allied bombing. Hitler decided that both the lance and the treasure of the Habsburgs would be buried in a specially built vault. Six months later, the city was under siege. The American troops fought hard with the SS formations and the artillery detachments that Hitler had arranged for the defense of Nuremberg. After a few days, the city was conquered. It was April 20th, 1945, the day of Hitler's 56th birthday. A certain Lieutenant William Horn, belonging to the American 7th Army, received the mission to find the treasure of the Habsburgs. The entrance to the secret vault, brought to light by a bomb, was accidentally discovered on April 30th, 1945, and Lieutenant Horn came into possession of the lance on behalf of the American government. On the same day, Hitler who was hidden in his bunker in Berlin committed suicide. Whether or not he knew that the spear had fallen into the hands of his enemies was never known. But many people saw in the coincidence of the two events the confirmation of the legend. After the war, the United States returned the lance to the Hofburg Museum in Vienna, where it can still be seen today. This is the provisional end of the legend of the Spear of Destiny. Longinus the Immortal, Eternal Journey to Redemption In a forgotten corner of the Roman Empire, Longinus, a war-hardened centurion, lived a life of discipline and struggle. He was a man of duty, but also of incessant questions that tormented him. His life was intertwined with the myths and rituals of the time, looking for a hidden meaning in them, a way to a deeper truth. The day of Jesus' crucifixion was the moment that broke the usual cycle of Longinus' life. His act, piercing the Savior, opened a gateway to another plane of existence. This moment was an entrance into a sacred space, where time and action entwined in a mysterious dance of death and rebirth. But with his transformation came an unexpected curse immortality. Longinus was condemned to live forever, a silent witness to the passing of time and the changes of the world. 
In this curse he found a profound paradox. The gift of eternal life was actually a burden, an endless journey through the desert of time. Longinus, now a specter among the ages, witnessed the rise and fall of empires, the evolution of civilizations, always searching for a lost meaning. Time became a labyrinth for him, where every moment was both a promise and a reminder of what had been. At the dawn of a new era, Longinus continues to wait. The return of Jesus is for him not only an end, but also the fulfillment of an eternal quest. It is the time when his immortal cycle will end, when he will find the answers to his eternal questions. The story of Longinus echoes the human search for meaning and redemption. It lives among us as a symbol of the aspiration to transcendence, a bridge between the past and the infinite, between the human and the divine. In his journey, we find our own quests and hopes, a red thread that connects all hearts in the eternal search for light.